Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Know How is brought to you by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This episode of Know How is brought to you by Pro XPN. Pro XPN is a virtual private network that allows you to use the internet the way it should be, anonymously and unfiltered. For 20% off your new account, go to proxpn.com slash twit and use the code KH20. Tired of Twitter cutting off your thoughts and limited to 140 characters? Today, you'll know how to set up a blog. Know how I am I as Actar, and this is the show where we give you a tech project you can do yourself. And the fact is, if I can do it, there's a really good chance that you can do it. And today, what we're gonna do is we're gonna set up a blog. Now, now you guys are thinking, you're like, hey, a blog? Like, isn't that like the 90s or like the early 2000s? It's 2013. Who sets up a blog? You've got Twitter, you've got Facebook. Well, I'm gonna go over to the board and actually write some stuff. I never get to do this. I'm gonna walk over here. So we've got Twitter, right, and Facebook. Now, Twitter, you got this great thing, 140 characters. Let's see, I've never, 140 characters. Now, you have those guys out there who love to write multiple, multiple tweets. It's like one of five. You know, earlier today, I was taking a look at somebody's tweet and said, like, here are the Ken ringtones, and he wrote, like, like 10 of these things. It's just not enough space for that. You go over to Facebook, now you can write as much as you want and you want this, that's fantastic. But the thing about Facebook though, is then they go, well, we're gonna add a bar here. Here's our little logo, we're gonna add a little search bar. Oh, and by the way, this, we'll move over here, we'll move this over here. And then you have no control and you're like, where's all my stuff? Also, if you want your friends to see stuff, you pay them seven bucks and then your post shows up at the top. Is that really what you wanna do? Because that seems a little silly. Oh, this chalkboard's a little messy. I, really, I can see why you don't really use that very often. On to the other side. So what we're going to do is set up a blog. Now, I've been doing blogs for years. I used to do something called a website. Back in 1997, I used to uh, code my own pages with tables and things. And the deal with that is that you had to keep adding all this information. And blogs made it really easy. Now, blog stands for web logs. That was the idea. So web log, you write this log and you write your ideas. It'd be a nice little journal. Well, the deal is with that, it became blogs. It's really a content management system. So you can put up whatever you want and it easily updates. So what we're gonna do first is we're gonna take a look at free solutions. You gotta make a choice. You set up a blog, you can either do a free a solution or self-hosted. First up, we're gonna take a look at free solutions where you don't have to do anything other than sign up because everything on the back end is taken care of for you. So the first thing we're gonna to go to is Blogger. Now Blogger is owned by Google and setting up one is really easy. If you have a Google account, this is what you'll see. You go to Welcome to Blogger, you sign up, it's really simple. You'll see like create your blog now, very, very easy. First thing you gotta do with this though is come up with a name. I'm gonna title this thing Afternoon Tea Sour Blog because it's my new favorite drink that I tried out and you'll see if there are an address is available. You'll continue doing this. Pretty basic, and then you're greeted with a page that looks a lot like Google Docs. So you have a post title. Post title looks a lot like a subject line. And you have this big empty page here. You can write stuff. So I'm just gonna make fun of people here. This is my first post. Uh, the words you're reading cannot be unread, but I look forward to writing good things. I might even publish something here. Now bloggers changed a whole lot since I started using it years ago. Now there's all this Google Plus integration. So you can actually point out other people on Google Plus by writing at somebody. So in this case, it's at Jason Howell. So I'm gonna harass Jason Howell, who I work with uh, on TNT every day. And so now you can see that here it's highlighted. You can see Jason Howell will be able to see this. And on the right side, we have a lot of options here for their posts. We can set labels, a schedule. We can even change the way the link looks, excuse me, uh, the location, and lots of different options available for you on Blogger. And once it's published, this is what it looks like. Blogger's got lots and lots of different uh, looks to it. This is the most simple and basic version of it. So that's really simple. I liked using Blogger a long time ago. It's actually how I got into CSS in the first place. 
Next up, I want to show you Tumblr. Now, Tumblr just got bought by Yahoo. $1.1 billion. So you know it's going to be around for, for a while, but it's really, really crazy simple. So right now, I'm loaded up Tumblr on my, this is my personal Tumblr here. This is the dashboard. Now, if you're looking right now, you're seeing like a bunch of content on the bottom here. Now, what Tumblr does now is they give you a lot of popular posts that are available on Tumblr around. So you have a really easy way to reblog things if you want to. Right down here, you can see this little reblog button or you can favorite things for later. When we're setting a post though, you see these are our options up top. So if I wanna write text, you'll see this pop open and I can write anything I want, like there is a truck outside, right? And it is noisy. Pretty easy stuff, right? This is pretty simple. But there's all other options if I want to do audio and video. Audio and video is really cool here because Tumblr, you can actually upload a, let's say you're doing a podcast or you do music or something. You can upload up to 10 megabytes for free without having to worry. And I believe videos are limited to about 100 megabytes. So this is a really simple and way to go. If you like to just do content and you don't want to worry about all kinds of different options and things, Tumblr's kind of limited in that scope, but it does allow you to do lots of different themes. I really like messing with themes. If you go to my actual Tumblr, is.tumblr, Tumblr, which I can spell really well, Tumblr with no E, by the way, you'll see that this is a very basic layout. I like this kind of clean thing. What you can do, though, is go into your settings, and we can mess with the actual look to it. So we got apps. In the settings, where is this thing? Mm -hmm. And we'll be editing this part out. Where is that thing? Here it is. All right, so three, two. We'll go into settings. So you can see right in the middle here, can't miss it if you're me, you'll see theme. You can hit customize. And there's lots of different options you can do right here. You can change the colors if you wanted to. Lots of different themes available for free on Tumblr. Some cost money, some don't. But you can see on the left side here, we've got lots of different options. We can al align the top menu, headings, collapse notes, content with a lot of customization here. And that's all on Tumblr. I use Tumblr a lot when it comes to smaller blogs, smaller projects, things that are quick. Uh, they have a really good mobile app. So if you want to do that kind of thing, it's very good. But I've got to show you WordPress.com because WordPress.com has been my favorite for the longest time. Because WordPress is incredibly powerful. There's a free version at WordPress.com. You just sign up. It doesn't cost you anything. And then you are welcomed to your dashboard. This is my dashboard for a podcast I do called Podcast Without Pretense. And you can see it's, it says 59 posts, 16 comments. Uh, you can see statistics, all kinds of things right here. You can set up a post. Let's just take a look at how to actually use WordPress. This might look a little bit more intimidating compared to Tumblr, because Tumblr's got a really simple layout, or Blogger, which looks a lot like a Google Doc, which you're probably used to. This dashboard might kind of scare you. Don't be afraid. It's actually really easy. Like I said, if I can do it, you seriously can. So on the first page here on the dashboard, there is a section called Quick Press right here. So if you wanted just to write something really quick like, hi, I'm on a show. You can do that right from here and you can publish it to the blog right there. If you want more control, you go into posts and add new. And now you'll be, you'll be greeted with a familiar thing if you're used to blogging. If you're not used to blogging, it looks a lot like email again. So we have uh, enter your title at the top and we have this space for all your body. Now there's a WYSIWYG editor. Now if you're not familiar, WYSIWYG stands for what you see is what you get. So it's kind of like your word processor. So you can bold things. You don't need to know HTML. You can do a lot of things like that. I want to show you an old post, though. There is some weirdness to WordPress. So let's say you want to embed an audio file. That's what this show is about. So we're going to hit Edit. I'll show you how WordPress handles audio files. And if we look at the text of the body here, we can get this closer and closer. Yeah, you can see that when it comes to WordPress, when you want to have an audio file that will have an automatic flash player, you have to do this thing called a bracket. You got to write bracket audio and the location of the file. You can't just put a simple embed code here for some reason. Uh, WordPress.com does have a lot of specialties when it comes to WordPress.com. Now, if you want a lot of control and you want to take WordPress to the next level, that's when you start doing something called a self-hosted WordPress or a self-hosted blog. But before we get to that, 
we're going to take a quick break and thank our friends at ProXPN. Now, ProXPN is a global VPN and works with almost any internet connection. It creates a secure encrypted tunnel through which all of your online data passes back and forth. Now, on Know How, we've shown you how to set up a VPN. But the thing about setting up something as easy as ProXPN is a turnkey solution, OK? Any online application can work with ProXPN, including your browser, email, file sharing, IM. Uh, everything you're doing is hidden. Now, we know about, on Tech News Today, we cover this every single day, it seems like, for the past couple of weeks, that there's the US government. And they're basically prying into everything you're doing. With a VPN, it's a little harder to do that. Now, your information is encrypted because, in this case, everything is encrypted using a 512-bit encryption tunnel. So it's going to take a very long time to decrypt what's going to happen, or what you're actually doing. It actually gives you options. You can use OpenVPN or PPTP. You get to choose. This lets you get protection against your ISP's six strikes rules. You can keep your personal internet usage away and private from your work. You can bypass internet filtering and blocked websites. So if they don't let you look at twit.tv slash kh, or they don't let you look at reddit.com, you can get around that. You can bypass geographical restrictions. So let's say you have this like really favorite video site somewhere, and that video is not available in your particular location. It doesn't matter with ProXPN. You can go anywhere you want to. You can access worldwide servers in the US, UK, Asia, and more. And ProXPN makes your internet connection, like I said, region free. So wherever you are, you can pretty much be anywhere you want to. Software works for Mac and Windows, gives you advanced controls. It allows you to select the programs and ports you want to anonymously route through port, uh, ProXPN servers. ProXPN also works with your iOS and Android device. So if you want to do VPN on the go from your mobile device, your Android device, iOS device, you can use ProXPN. And they've got world-class customer support. So if you need help, they can help you out. And dig this. If you ever watch twit.tv and you watch Security Now, you know that Steve Gibson, he is the host of Security Now. He is a big privacy advocate. And he gave it a great review on Security Now. So if Steve Gibson likes it, You'll like it. I love it. It seems like a great idea. Uh, go to proxpn.com slash twit for more information to sign up. ProXPN premium accounts are normally $9.95 a month or $74.95 for an entire year. But we've got a special offer. Use the code KH20 to receive 20% off for the lifetime of your account. That's not going to run out. That's less than 5 bucks a month on the yearly plan. If you're not satisfied within seven days, you can get a full refund. Go to proxpn.com slash twit and sign up with the code KH20. Go to proxpn.com slash twit and sign up with the code KH20. We thank ProXPN for the support of know-how. And don't forget, guys, even though you can set up VPNs, you can set this up for your family, your friends, and they'll have this kind of excellent support thanks to ProXPN. Shall we move on to self-hosted blogs? Now, I've been doing self-hosted blogs for a very long time. Uh, because I've done my own shows and blogs and other weird things. And the first thing you want to do when you're doing any of this stuff, before you even go get a host, you're going to want a domain name. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a tip, a pro tip for me when it comes to setting up a blog. When you get a domain name, I'm going to show you a website called namecheck.com. It's N-A-M-E-C-H-K. So if we go to my, my laptop, you can see namecheck.com right here. And what I can do is type a username. So let's say I wanted to have a brand new blog. I'm going to call it, um, let's see, I will call it LOL do a show. Like it's not exactly, that's actually a horrible URL, but let's check it out. Hit check. And what you'll see is what this website does, it's going to check all over the place. So on the top here, we've got these available domains LOL do a show.info, .me, .mobi are available. You can see if it's on blog or Facebook, YouTube. Because when you do one of these things, you want to make sure you have that same uh, URL, that same identity everywhere. And it's checking all these sites for you. You can see that we've got lots of availability. Because this, by the way, is a horrible, horrible domain name. But you could get it this way. So you can see that's the first thing I suggest doing. Double check or triple check. See the availability of your domain name on lots of different sites. Because you probably will have a Twitter site. You probably will have a Facebook site want to make sure you have that available. Uh, I'm going to show you something called Bluehost. This is the hosting service I use. It's not free. It costs $5 a month right now. I think my old deal is about, uh, 
seven bucks a month. So it's, it's really it's a really a very affordable uh, uh, hosting service for me. And what they do is they give you a control panel. It used to be in the old days when you want to set up a blog, you'd have to take the files from your computer. First, you would download them from WordPress.org. Then you would unpack them, you'd customize them, upload them via FTP. I'm not even kidding you. This took, this took a long time. If something broke in the middle, you have to do it all over again. It could be a real mess. It's gotten so much simpler. So when you sign up, what you do is, in this case, we have a control panel. I'm going to scroll down. You can see all the way down the bottom here, you're going to see website builders. There's WordPress, Simple Scripts, Weebly, GoMobi. What happens though, when you click WordPress, you end up at this space called Mojo Marketplace in this particular case. You could use WordPress, Anchor CMS, uh, you could use Joomla, or you could use Drupal even. So Twitch built on Drupal, by the way. It's really powerful. It might be too powerful for something like just a regular blog. I, I would recommend using WordPress because well, I know WordPress inside and out, and uh, it's it got a lot of plugins in this case. So my old website, for my older show, I used to do a how-to show called This Old Nerd. This show is built on WordPress. You can see it looks like a blog, right? There's there's me and a Flash player, and there I am looking confused because when I do projects, I'm often confused. And then we keep going. You can see it works just fine. What we do with WordPress, here's the dashboard that's at this WordPress install. Now, it looks similar to the WordPress.com site, but the colors are a little different. Really not that different. You can see on the right side, we have a quick press uh, option. We've got our posts, same kind of feel. But the best thing about WordPress, when you are actually bothering to do your own host and install, you can use plugins. Now, plugins are make your WordPress install super powerful. And in this case, I was setting up a podcast. So I needed RSS feeds and I needed all kinds of things. Now, in this, we take a look to the left here. I also allow allowed a lot of comments. And what I liked is the discuss comment system. You can just simply go and pick that up. It's, it's free. You can activate it. And you just have to set up an account. We've got that. We've also got iframes because WordPress.com does not, sorry, WordPress. Uh, the hosted version of WordPress does not do iframe support right away. So if you're embedding things from YouTube or you're embedding things from other sources that have iframes, you have to activate these things. Stat counters and, of course, my favorite one was the podcasting plugin by TSG, which generates all kinds of feeds for me. I don't have to bother with that. It also allowed me to set up so many different styles of feeds. So if I had an HD feed, if I had a 640 by 480, all of that stuff's there. You can do slideshows, all kinds of plugins. And if you want to know how to get one, you just go to plugins and you click add new on the left right here, and you get a screen like this. So let's say I wanted a video player. I can hit search plugins. And I'm going to be greeted with a large list of options for video players, depending on my internet connection today. There we go. WordPress video player, HTML5 video player with playlists. So these are just, you can try them out, install them. You can uninstall them or deactivate them if you don't like it. Uh, and I, I've got to say, WordPress is really phenomenal if you're into podcasting. It's really great if you just want to write. If you want to send things via email, they have a great application. So you can do all kinds of things including, I believe there's a plugin where you can email to your blog. So if you, let's say you're like an Instagram nut and you're like, I just want to send pictures to my blog, you can do that. So there's lots of different options there. And there's just far, far too many plugins to talk about right now. So definitely check out WordPress. I, I think it's the best, most powerful, yet simple to use a CMS out there, content management system you could get. Uh, and if you wanted to learn a podcast, by the way, we did do an episode about that. That was way back, I think, like episode 20-something. If you go to twit.tv slash kh, you can find all our old episodes, including that one. You can find out how to set up a video podcast, or if you watch uh, the episode where we set up a home studio, you can see how to light a podcast. So that'll be the other half of this program. Go back, take a look, twit.tv slash kh. Uh, and right now, we should go and check in with our brilliant audience, the know-it-alls. <laughs> All right, so know-it-alls. You know, the thing is, last week, we did an episode about a DIY book scanner. It was me and Patrick Delahanty. He was taking up space over there and basically outshining me in his amazingness. We got this note on our Google Plus page. If we have a Google Plus community available at gplus.to slash twitkh. And we got a note from William. And he wrote, last year, 
I made a copy of my old 1954 high school yearbook. I mounted the camera underneath a tripod. Using Patrick Delahanty's formula for cost, it was zero dollars. I already had the camera, tripod, is, a tripod, etc., and used ambient light. And he showed us the results. He even showed us his actual setup on Google Plus, because thanks to Google Plus, you can embed images. It's available for everybody to see, by the way. If you want to see what it looks like, here's a setup by William. He's got a camera dangling on a tripod, as far as I can tell. I don't know if that's the safest thing to do with an SLR or DSLR, but, uh, well, he did it, and he definitely got some really good results. Uh, there's a link over there. You can see his results of his, of his yearbook, but I don't want to show those people's faces in case they haven't signed a release. Uh, William, I don't know if you got that available for Google+. We also got another email, because we actually take emails at knowhow at twit.tv. I've got an email from Jerry. He says he loves the show. About Show 51 scanning books. Some libraries, like the one I, uh, I work in, will have a book scanner for free use. A book scanner is designed to have a very small edge, so the book can be scanned one page at a time with it hung over to the edge, helping to prevent spine damage. We also have software to make a PDF and or do OCR to make an audiobook using Kurzweil software. Thanks. We've got the smartest audience right there. I didn't even know that libraries have book scanners that apparently we're allowed to use. So if you're in, a, in an area with a library, which is lots and lots of places around the United States, it looks like you might have the option of trying out a free book scanner and even using this software to make yourself an audiobook out of a book you might own. That's pretty impressive. If you have questions or comments or you have better ideas to how to make book scanners and all kinds of wacky ideas, or if there's a blogging engine that you love that we didn't talk about, there's lots of ways to contact us. You could try out Google+. I really like that as a, as a method because when you write something there, everyone can see it. We all can have conversations. There's over 3,500 of you guys in our Google+ community. gplus.to slash twitkh. That's the easiest way to find it. Uh, there's also Twitter. We take a look, or I have a saved search. If you use the hashtag twitkh, I'm always taking a look at that every day I see who's writing what, coming up with crazy ideas or brilliant ideas available on Twitter. And also, they have to be really short. So it's always very nice. Or there's that old school method now, right? You could actually send us an email, knowhow at twit.tv. So you could do that. So lots of different options. That's the way you get in contact with us on this program. Uh, let's see. Now, we know how to set up a blog. So you can go out there, set up a free one if you want to, do your own self-hosted one. Uh, I'm going to go back to blogging now and just keep writing and writing and writing because Obviously, I can't keep my mouth shut. 140 characters is not enough. Not enough for me. I need more. And also, you can send links from Twitter over your blog, right? So why not have some more traffic? So now you know how. Go, go do it.